The WHO could be downplaying the possibility that COVID-19 is an airborne disease. Here's why this is important. According to the New York Times, 239 scientists in 32 countries say the coronavirus is an airborne disease that can linger in tiny droplets to infect people indoors in a report dated July 4th. The New York Times states a scientific journal will publish the researchers' open letter in the coming days. According to WHO's guidelines, COVID spreads mainly by contact, and airborne transmission of the virus only happens during medical procedures that create aerosols. Yet, dissenting experts believe the virus could transmit via much smaller droplets that could carry the virus to longer distances. The implication of the study is that N95 rated face masks should be worn not just by medical professionals, but ordinary people going about their business indoors. The letter's co-signer, Lindsay Marr, told the New York Times that the WHO's guidelines are based on experiments at hospital rooms where good airflow and lower virus volumes prevailed. According to The Guardian, documented outbreaks at meatpacking plants suggest these studies underestimate the virus's ability to survive in typical indoor conditions. At the time of writing, the WHO continues to recommend saving surgical masks for medical workers and not the general public. The New York Times reports that the new study would mean institutions should use powerful air filters, virus-killing UV lights, and face masks to prevent indoor transmission. Referring to the agency's slowness in changing its guidelines, an unnamed WHO consultant told the Times, At the country level, a lot of WHO technical staff are scratching their heads. This is not giving us credibility. So wearing a mask really has been useful all alone in reducing the virus's spread, regardless of what China-approved experts at the WHO tells you. A message to the White House from the National Academies of Science, Engineering and Medicine found strong evidence in the existing scientific literature that the novel coronavirus may be spread through normal breathing. The report, issued on April 1st, buttresses the argument that asymptomatic people should wear masks to reduce inadvertent transmission of the virus. Until now, most global health agencies have stated the primary route of transmission for SARS-CoV-2 is through respiratory droplets, up to one millimeter wide, that are expelled when people cough or sneeze. These fall to the ground within one or two meters. They can also be deposited on surfaces from where they can infect people who touch their eyes, nose or mouth. The report by the National Academies cited previous research, including a study in the New England Journal of Medicine, which found that novel coronavirus can float in aerosol droplets less than 5 microns wide for up to three hours. The study cited an earlier one from University of Nebraska Medical Center researchers, which found viral RNA on hard-to-reach surfaces and in air samples more than two meters away from infected people. The report also cited research from Wuhan University, which found that novel coronavirus can be resuspended in the air when healthcare workers remove their personal protective equipment, clean infected floors, or otherwise operate in infected areas. Also cited in the National Academy's report was a study by University of Hong Kong researchers in nature medicine, which found masks reduced the detection of human coronavirus RNA, not including SARS-CoV-2, in both respiratory droplets and aerosols. That study has yet to undergo peer review. While the report contained the caveat that one must be cautious in imputing the findings with one respiratory virus to another respiratory virus, its authors concluded that the presence of viral RNA in air droplets and aerosols indicates the possibility of viral transmissions via these routes. In an email to Science Insider, Kimberly Prather, an aerosol chemist at the University of California, San Diego, said she was relieved to see aerosolization is accepted. This added airborne pathway helps explain why it is spreading so fast, she said. As late as March 27, a scientific brief from the World Health Organization stated that an analysis of more than 75,000 COVID-19 cases in China found no cases of the virus spreading through aerosols. On April 3rd, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reversed its previous advice on wearing masks in public and recommended that everyone wear cloth face coverings while out in public during the pandemic. In its announcement, the CDC stressed that surgical masks or N95 respirators must be reserved for healthcare workers and medical first responders. Speaking of China and COVID, the BBC reports the brilliant dudes in Beijing has ordered a new round of lockdowns for thousands of people in Hebei province. Why did this happen, you ask? Because the virus has a nasty habit of coming back. China is rightfully spooked by a new outbreak of COVID-19 right in its capital. Here is what we know. 
China has published the preliminary report on the Xinfadi market, a major food distributor that is linked to Beijing's latest surge in coronavirus cases, according to Reuters. Citing the initial findings, Reuters reports the market's seafood and meat stalls were heavily contaminated by the virus. The Chinese report speculates that low temperatures and high humidity helped the virus to thrive in the market. Citing the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Reuters reports that most Xinfadi employees who became sick worked in the seafood section, followed by the beef and mutton section. Patients linked to the seafood section were the first to show symptoms. Inspectors found the virus on chopping boards used for imported salmon. Reuters reports that Chinese authorities have warned the public against eating uncooked salmon and halted imports of the fish from European suppliers. However, Chinese officials still do not know where the new outbreak came from. Reuters reports that a leading body of the Chinese Communist Party issued a statement this week saying the lack of hygiene in the nation's food supply chain must be addressed urgently. Color me shocked, comrades! For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.